Devoted Druid was a classic card in Modern, used to make infinite mana alongside Vizier of Remedies to cast Walking Ballista for X is a million. But with the printing of so much creature removal and ways to prevent the combo, Devoted Druid vanished. Having said that, two new cards have revived the archetype. Tavar and Tavar Stand both do a ton of work to support the combo. Tavar being a planeswalker that not only gives the druid haste, but reanimates a combo piece is a huge addition to the list and why we play 4. Tavar Stand works similar in the sense that it both protects your combo creatures for 1 mana, and if you have infinite mana, then there are lines to attack and pump your creature for the kill. As we want as many value creatures as possible, we play Stoneforge Mystic. This also offers a new way to make infinite mana with the druid from Luxior Giardas Gift, as it gives plus one plus one for each minus one minus one counter on it. The rest of the deck is full of creatures that both protect and support our combo, offering some niche ways to kill with infinite mana or infinite untaps to make our threats more diverse. If you doubt the power level of this deck, then you need to watch the whole video as we do really well. Starting off our first hand, game one of the first match, it's really, really good. We got turn one Birds of Paradise into turn two Stoneforge Mystic alongside two Druids to combo. Now, the only thing we don't want to see is a Thought Seize because if the opponent does have a removal spell for the Stoneforge Mystic, we can just hard cast the equipment. The opponent Lightning Bolts the Birds of Paradise and passes back the turn, and with the Birds of Paradise again off the top, I decide that it's better to play the Devoted Druid here because we do have Luxier Giada's Gift in the deck, and then I can decide if I want to get the Giada's Gift next turn or a threat with the Stoneforge Mystic. That whole plan goes out the window when they do have a Thought Seize, so now they're going to take the Stoneforge Mystic and we have to draw something off the top of the deck. But like an absolute beast, we draw Tyvar off the top of the deck. And now we have a really cool line. What we can do here is play the Tyvar, reanimate the Stoneforge Mystic, go and get the Batter Skull, then play our Besaju, play our Birds of Paradise, untap the Devoted Druid, and activate the Stoneforge Mystic because the Tyvar gives it haste. Now you might be wondering why did I get Batter Skull instead of Caldra Complete, and that's because of the Godless Shrine, they could have Prismatic Ending for the token, and I want to re-equip. The opponent just spends their turn cantripping with Ransack the Lab, plays their land and passes back. We're in such an amazing spot here, I think we're almost guaranteed to win. And with the Stoneforge Mystic off the top, now we can actually go get Caldra Complete and put the opponent on a two turn clock. From here, there wasn't much the opponent could do, so after we bashed in and passed back the turn, they did cantrip a bit and then they conceded. Going into boarding, I'm scared of the opponent having something like Fury and relying on the graveyard, so I boarded in two Sanctifier and Vex and two Endurances. Going into game two, I decided to keep a clunky seven because I expected the opponent to have a lot of discard and I would rather rely on the top of my deck, so I want four lands in my hand. We keep, and the opponent starts off with an Inquisition of Kozlek, getting rid of the Tavar. All we need are spells off the top of the deck to win this game, and we start off with a Vizier off the top, so now we can play our Lair, play our Birds, and see what the opponent has. Now, to my surprise, not only does the opponent have a removal spell, they don't have a land. So, with the Tyvar stand off the top of the deck, I'm going to play my second layer, play the Vizier, and now hold up Tyvar stand to protect both of my creatures. What did they keep? Well, they continued to not hit their land drop, and they just passed back again. So, it's a very risky keep to keep Blackleaf Cliff's discard spell with no interaction. I don't know. With a Tyvar off the top of the deck, things are now looking super easy for us. Wanting to play around Bolt, I just play the Tyvar and untap the birds and then attack in with the Vizier. The opponent does have an Unholy Heat, so I'm going to Tyvar stand here just in case they do hit their second land drop and have a card like Dreadbore in their hand. There is good reason to let the Vizier die and reanimate it with the Tyvar next turn, but I'd just rather keep all my creatures on the board. The opponent does Burning Inquiry on their turn, hits their second land, and passes back, and we find an Ella Domri's Call off the top of the deck. Now this is lethal because what we can do is go get a Devoted Druid, as we have Layer of the Hydra on the table, this is a creature that we can reanimate for X, and we can make X Infinity, and the Tyvar gives the Devoted Druid haste, so we're going to make infinite mana, pump up this Layer of the Hydra, and the opponent concedes before we can animate the land. Before we go on to the next round, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the content, as a lot of people forget to click that button. Okay, now that you've seen an easy matchup, let's try a hard one. We're on the play and we have a decent opening hand, with Giver of Runes into Stoneforge Mystic. As we've got two layers in hand, I think the best land to get is Godless Shrine, because now we can cast a Tyvar and still have good green mana. The opponent starts off with Flooded Strand, showing that they're on a control deck, and with the land off the top, I'm slamming this Stoneforge Mystic to go get the Caldra complete. There's no point in dealing one damage with the Giver of Runes, so I just pass back. Now it turns out they're not on a control deck because they play Urza's Saga and the Reality Chip. 
so they must be on hammer time. What's good is Caldra Complete is really good against hammer time, so I'm going to get that on the table as soon as possible and bash in for 5. Now instead of playing a tapped layer, I'm going to play my Birds of Paradise, so next turn I can play Stoneforge Mystic and Violin and other equipment. The opponent just plays a Springleaf Drum and passes back the turn, clearly showing they want to make a construct with Urza's Saga. With the opponent having no pressure on the board and having a Giver of Runes on my side, I think that it's still good to play the Stoneforge Mystic, get the Batter Skull, hold up Tyvar's Stand and the activation from my other Stoneforge Mystic so that we can keep the pressure on, gain a load of life and worry about a hammer time down the line. They make a Construct on my end step as expected and float mana in response to the third Saga trigger. As I'm scared of a Pithy Needle, I do violin the Batter Skull as I'm not too concerned of holding up Tyvar's Stand as we still have the Giver of Runes on the table. Now things start to look not too good for us when they get a Shadow Spear, play a Pure Steel Paladin, play a land, and then have a Giver of Runes plus a Colossus Hammer. Now while we do have a Giver of Runes, it actually doesn't really work when they block a Construct, because Giver of Runes can give protection from Colorless, but our Batter Skull is Colorless, so if we block with our creature and give protection from Colorless, the Batter Skull falls off and the Germ dies. I could block with let's say the Stoneforge Mystic and give it protection from Colorless, but I'll still take a ton of Trample damage, so I decide to just Chump block with the Germ and gain 4 life and not give it protection, because I want to gain the life and prevent more damage. We go to the damage step, we go down to 7, and the opponent moves around their equipments to the Giver of Runes to have a big blocker. With the Stoneforge Mystic off the top, I think the best play here is to be mana efficient and equip our Caldra Complete with the Batter Skull and give protection from white so that we can attack in for a lot of damage and also have a big blocker. After passing back the turn, the opponent moves the equipment back onto the Construct and attacks in for a lot of damage again. Being scared of a card Blacksmith Skill to pump the Construct and make it 18 Trample, I block with both Stoneforge Mystics so that I don't die. We go down to 4 life and the opponent plays a Sigardas Aid and a Pure Steel Paladin and then moves around the equipments again. With a Devoted Druid off the top, we can actually have lethal next turn and that's because of the Lair of the Hydra, and with Stoneforge Mystic being able to find the Giada's Gift out of the deck. So I start off the turn by giving the Germ protection from white and getting in for 9 so that we can gain 9 life. Now I can play both the Stoneforge Mystic, get the Giada's Gift out of the deck, and play the Devoted Druid with Tyvor's Stand Up because of the Birds of Paradise. The opponent starts off the turn with two Esper Sentinels and puts the equipments back on the Construct. To no one's surprise, the opponent attacks in with the Construct for a lot of damage. There's no better play than to block with everything that we don't need on the board to try and soak up as much as possible in case they have way to pump it. The opponent uses Giver of Runes and Shadow Spear to make my creatures lose Indestructible and kill them both, leaving me at 6. The opponent then plays an Urza Saga, moves around the equipment, and just says go. With an Eladomri's Call off the top, we have multiple ways to kill the opponent, but the best way to start is with the Giada's Gift. They draw two cards from Esper Sentinel, and it hits the table, so now we can equip our Devoted Druid and hope that they don't have something like Path to Exile. Come on, they don't have it. Now we can make infinite mana with the Devoted Druid, then we can either use Eladomri's Call with the Birds of Paradise to get Walking Blister, or we can do the cool line of animating Lair of the Hydra, equipping it with Batter Skull, and bashing in with protection from the Giver of Runes. The opponent concedes at the beginning of combat, and we win this game, which I almost thought was unwinnable. That is, uh, pretty insane. Going into boarding, we want every way to destroy artifacts and creatures from our sideboard into the deck, which is what we do. And going into game two, our hand is actually insane because we have interaction, ways to put pressure on them, and also have Tyvar to develop our board. I keep this hand and the opponent starts off the game with a Giver of Runes. With the land off the top and wanting to keep my life as high as possible, I get a basic forest and play the birds. Now the opponent plays an Ornithopter and passes back with no land drop. We're really good at making our opponents not hit their second land in game twos. Anyways, land off the top, play the Stoneforge Mystic, and I was going to get the Manriki equipment out of my deck, but I just misclicked and got the Giada's Gift, which was uh, quite funny, and wanting to play around a way to remove the Giada's Gift, I just passed back the turn, as I don't need it on the board with no Devoted Druid. The opponent shows that they're on a slow draw when they just play the Reality Chip and pass back, so now we can get an Overgrown Tomb to set up for the Tavar. With no 2-drop creatures in the graveyard, I'm just going to play the Tavar and untap the Birds of Paradise so that we can activate Stoneforge Mystic to put Batter Skull into play. Now the opponent untaps and does nothing, which is screaming interactive spells like Spell Pierce and Path to Exile. 
So I put the Batter Skull into play, attack in, and because we drew another Tyvar, I decide to just blindly minus our one on the table, and we do hit a Stoneforge Mystic, which now we can get the Mariki out of the deck. Wanting to play around Spell Pierce, I just file in the Manriki and equip it to the other Stoneforge Mystic, but they do have a way to remove it with a March of Otherworldly Light. From here, they just couldn't catch up when we played our Outbound Liberator, so they just conceded the match. Overall, I really like this deck. In this league, the only bad matchup I had was Is It Murktide because they can counter and remove all the relevant permanents on the board, and things like Unholy Heat kill the Tavar. Apart from that, I thought this deck was really, really good, and we managed to get 4 wins and 1 loss, netting us 5 chests, so I'm going to open them for you gambling degenerates. I highly recommend this deck in modern right now, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out this YouTube video because YouTube thinks you'll like it.